Am I live? Okay. All right, I hope this works this time. I've been having issues with Facebook the last few times I tried to go live. I didn't even start the Instagram video yet. So I just want to make sure the Facebook's okay because there we kept having issues. This happened last time too. <sighs> All right. Okay. I hope it's working. All right. Okay. As you come on in. Hi. Hello, Candace. I've been having such issues going live on Facebook. It happened like a few weeks ago too. And it just like, it, it wasn't like it kept loading and loading. Hello, Mallory, as you're coming in, let me know where you are viewing this from. And now that we're good to go, I'm going to press go live on Instagram. All right. Okay. <laughs> it happened last time too. It was like, it was low. Facebook doesn't like me, but that's probably because I don't like it. I have a feeling that's uh, what's going on here. Okay. Um, now I'll be going live simultaneously in two spots. I'll be on Instagram as well. So I'll be going like this a little bit, moving things around, slapping things. I feel like really confined when I got to do this. I got to, I got to figure out a better setup. I will. One of these days. I always complain about it too. Every single time I go live. Hi, Erica. Hello. I figured it out. I figured Facebook out. All right. Let's go live on Instagram. I wanted to do Facebook first because last time that I did it both, in both places, um, I was talking on Instagram for like a good 10, 15 minutes and I realized that Facebook wasn't loading, so. Okay. All right, how is everybody? Let me know where you are coming from. They're waiting over there. <laughs> All right, hello Instagram. Hello Facebook. Hi, we are live for day one of Manifest the Shit out of 2024. Welcome, welcome everyone to the challenge. Welcome everyone who is new to the Manifesting Miracle Worker community. Welcome everyone who has been here, all the OGs. This is our fourth annual iteration of the Manifest the Shit out of challenge. And as I say that, it is now 1.11 p.m., the 1.11. I always see the ones. Guys, always pay attention to the number patterns you're seeing and look them up. Look them up. As you are joining in on Facebook and Instagram, let me know where you're viewing this from. Say hello. And yeah, now that Facebook is working, I decided to go live on Instagram. Sorry to make everyone wait over there. Hi, New Jersey. Awesome. Candace is from New Jersey. I am from New York, which uh, it's the tri-state area. So it's like it's all the same. That should be its own state, just like the tri-state area. Yeah, this is our fourth annual manifestation and spiritual healing New Year's challenge. This year, we did it a little late. I wanted to do it the last week of the month because there's always so much going on in January. And I figured, let me do it the last week of the month. Then we can really set off into the new year with new energy. And this year, we're really going to focus on just that, on energy, on energy and embodiment, okay? This year is all about alignment and abundance through energy and embodiment because the truth is, like, we can do the work, the work, all day long. We can do the healing work. We could do the journal work. We could do the mindset work, and we could do the manifestation work. But unless you really know how to hold the energy of the version of you that you desire to be, unless you really know how to embody that version of you and embody that energy, it's going to be really hard to enter that next level reality. And that's really what we're going to be talking about for the next five days. Welcome everyone. As you're joining in, let me know where you are joining from. And yes, I'm on Facebook and Instagram, just letting everyone know. Hi, Tina. Listening from work from Washington. Hello, sister. So happy that you can join us. We will be going live every day uh, in both places on Facebook and Instagram for the next five days. Steph says integration is my hardest part. Yeah, and that happens for a lot of us. That was me for a while. It was really easy for me to do the work and figure out what it was that I wanted and really easy for me to set intentions. 
but it, it always felt difficult for me to actually integrate these pieces into my reality and then also to not let my external reality my current reality infiltrate and um become such a big influence right like because sometimes we do got to be a little delusional a little delulu to manifest our next level reality right we're pretending we live there and when our when our current reality is not where we want it to be we can either let that hold us back over and over and over again or we can continuously do these energy and embodiment and healing practices to get to where we want to be from snowy maine hi mandy oh, maine so beautiful and i love the snow that might not be you right now my apologies <laughs> i love maine i love the snow and thank you for being here so happy you guys are all here uh yeah if you don't know me already my name is amanda may i'm the founder of the manifesting miracle worker brand and community and we've been doing this we've been doing this challenge for about four years i have been in business for about five years i left my nine to five in finance i was a financial advisor I left that about five years ago, right before COVID started. And it was, it was the scariest decision of my life, but I knew this was what I wanted to do. I knew I wanted to teach people spirituality. I knew I wanted to teach people manifestation and talk about these things all day long. I couldn't think of anything more exciting, but in my business, it took a very long time for me to get it to work. And in fact, it was like success, true success, just kept getting further away. I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't figure it out for a really, really long time. And I'm gonna talk about that a little bit today. But, you know, we, when we choose the life that we want and we choose to create it deliberately, that means choosing to come back to you, choosing to come back to your own power, the power that we all have within us, the divine energy that we all have within us. It could be a process. It could be a process. And what happened to me was that I, A, I was letting external reality become too loud and I wasn't really honoring myself and honoring my process. But I'm glad it took as long as it took because I don't think that we would be here today in the iteration we're in today. Over the last few months alone, we've welcomed over 10,000 new souls into this community. People are consistently enrolling in our courses and programs. It has been absolutely wild. It's been so beautiful. And it was, it, it was like I finally got over that hump. Like, finally. And it was all this process of quantum manifestation, quantum transformation which is what I will be talking about today. Hello, everyone is joining. Welcome to day one. And yeah, we're going to start with quantum transformation today because it's about the whole journey. Sometimes when we are so focused on creating abundance for ourselves, financial freedom for ourselves, we're trying to create success and we're trying so, so hard to create these specific things, we forget about the greater journey. And that's personal transformation. And it all works together. It all works together and it all comes back to you, okay? It's all built on that, that root, that foundation of self-love. So once I started to embrace personal transformation instead of just going after the more money or after the financial freedom, that is really when everything changed. As everyone is coming in, let me know where you're calling in. Calling in. Yeah, calling in if you're on your phone. Where are you calling in from? I sound like a radio announcer. Hello, Facebook. Hello, 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 hello. So over the next five days, we are going to come together just like this every day for about an hour. And I'm going to be delivering a training. But if you have questions, please leave them in the chat because I love questions. I love it to be more interactive, okay? Especially if you're on the live and you're not watching the replay, right? You have the chance to ask your questions or the chance to just participate it's beautiful so don't don't be afraid to do that okay this is open to everybody um yeah over the next five days you're also going to be getting some work to do each day i'm going to be giving you some homework nothing crazy but the point is since we're so focused on energy and embodiment over the next five days i am going to be having you sink into energy and embodiment every day consistently through the work that you're going to be doing Consistency is a huge part of this, guys. It's a huge part of reality creation. It's a huge part of entrepreneurship. It's a huge part of healing. 
And I think that word consistency, a lot of us are afraid of it, right? We There's a lot of negativity that can come along with that. Like, oh, you know, let's say, for example, you're an entrepreneur and consistency. Well, what does consistency mean when I'm creating content? Does that mean I have to show up every single day? I can't do that. So then you feel like you're doing something wrong, right? Well, I can't be consistent. You need to start defining consistency on your own terms. That is something that I did that greatly transformed my life. I began to define consistency on my own terms. When it comes to doing work like this, especially the spiritual work, as long as you are doing something just a little bit, maybe even if it's once a week, as long as you're doing something to move the needle closer to your desired reality in a consistent way, you will get there. So consistency doesn't have to mean every single day. Define these things on your own terms. And in fact, much of this challenge is gonna be devoted to you defining things on your own terms. Remember, it all comes back to you. We want the success and abundance because we want it for us. We want the feelings that it's going to bring. We wanna feel fulfilled. We wanna feel more in line and in tune with our higher self, the highest version of ourselves. We don't do it for them. We don't do it for our parents or our spouses. Sometimes we may feel like we do, or we may get the idea that we have to. We definitely don't do it for society and society's standards of what's right and what success means or what abundance means. You do it for you. So this week, you're going to be coming back to you through these journaling practices that I give you. Even just being here every single day, celebrate that. Just showing up, even just showing up for the replay celebrate that this is doing the work guys and you're going to be doing it consistently over the next five days and that's how you really get that energy moving the momentum going okay checking in tita says i love that not being consistent has stopped me from so much yeah and what happens is we tell ourselves i can't be consistent or i'm doing something wrong so then we get stuck in that story and all it does is perpetuate that story of i'm not being consistent and i'm not and i'm doing something wrong right? Define it on your own terms. This is all about you. It all, all, all comes back to you. So yeah, we're going to come together for five days, five days straight. And each day is going to be an awesome training. Today is all about quantum transformation. It's a whole journey. Okay. So over the last year, my business has expanded, exploded, exploded in growth. Um, I finally figured out what success is and what it looked like to me. Everything has been manifesting, like everything that I've been wanting for so long, that I was wanting for so long, like it's all here. And it took me so long to try to figure it out. It took me a very long time because all I wanted was success. All I wanted was a community. I wanted to bring together people who were like me. We're just like me and who love spirituality and who love manifestation and, and who want to talk about these things all day long and who love personal development and who are so serious about their personal growth and their spiritual growth. That's all I wanted. And now it's finally here. And I'm seeing as I look back, what did I do different? You know, like I asked myself that, what did I do different? What is different? What has changed? And one of these things is embracing the whole journey, the journey of personal transformation. And in that process, I figured out how to collapse the gap, how to collapse time and quantumly transform. You know, sometimes I think that maybe it's all the work that I did and I just built up all that momentum. But the thing is, I took a lot of time off from doing the work. I wasn't doing the work, not consistently. Once I finally started to double back down on my spiritual practice, my spiritual routine, my, my personal development work, and when I got really serious about my business and what, what I wanted out of it and how I wanted to feel, and I really got clear on the version of myself who was living in the reality that I wanted to live in, that's when everything changed. You're going to get really clear on that this week. You got to you gotta get to know who that version of you is, your future self. Who is that person? How do they feel? How do they walk, talk, dress, act? What are their habits and routines? You really got to get to know that version of you. That is embodiment. Because once you really start becoming that version of you more and more and more, boom, you're in that reality. So, yeah, you know, you could do all of the work. You could do all the healing work. You can do all the spiritual work. But if you're not embodying the energy of the you you desire to be, and if you're not mastering your energy and checking in with your energy and understanding how your energy works on a daily basis, 
you're never going to go get over that wall. And I don't mean you need to be doing your spiritual practice every day, guys, right? Like we just talked about consistency is whatever it means to you. But what I do mean is you got to be checking in with your energy every day. Check in with yourself. What are my dominant thoughts? What are my dominant feelings? What are my dominant vibrations or vibration? Ask yourself these things. This is how you begin to master your own energy. Again, it all comes back to you. And don't shame yourself if you're not where you want to be. That was another reason that it, it took me a really long time to get over that wall. I was called the brick wall because it's like you can't. Duh. Finally got over it. I was shaming myself. I was blaming myself. I was, you know, just like the queen of self-blame and self-shame. And when we sink into those vibrations and those thoughts and feelings, we're just going to attract more of the same. So what I did through this process of quantum transformation, I figured out that there were three phases that go into it, three phases that go into reality creation as a whole, because that's really what we're doing when we transform our lives, we're creating our desired reality, right? We're deliberately designing it on purpose. Like you have the power to create whatever you want, you. And it's not because you wanna create it for everyone else, you're doing it for you because it's your power and it's your choice. And when we're living out of alignment with what we really want, things are not gonna be that easy. They're not. For a long time, I was living out of alignment and I was defining success and abundance on everyone else's terms other than my own. The whole entire process, the overall process of quantum transformation is, is what's going to really help you get into that desired reality, the next level reality. I'm going to check it on Facebook. See, this is big facts. Yeah. Yeah. So the whole process of transformation, you know, this means that you're looking at the whole picture. Sometimes when we decide what we want, like success or abundance or 10K months or clients that are amazing, it, it, sometimes I feel like we don't even know why we want these things. Like, why do we really want what we want? Why? Ask yourself that. We got to figure this out. Sometimes when we're working towards these specific things, instead of looking at the overall picture, we can get really hung up. And when these specific things is something that we really, really want, like money, financial freedom, abundance, success, when it's something that we really, 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 really want, it, it's sometimes very difficult to get there because we want it. It hasn't happened yet. Where is it? Why can't we do this? Why can't we make it happen? And we just cycle off, spin off into that the the never ending self shame and blame and the infinity loop the infinity loop of suffering hi honey yes i'm so happy you're here i loved your post yesterday oh my god love that so happy everyone's here this is day one day one got four more days too yeah we we cycle out but when we can view everything as the whole picture right quantum transformation what are we transforming in our lives what about taking the different pieces of our lives let's look at our health let's look at the way we show up with ourselves to ourselves for ourselves how do we nurture ourselves what do we do for ourselves on a daily basis what do we want our day to look like what do we want our mornings to look like what do we want our evenings to look like where do we want to go how do we want to feel what does our family life look like what do our friends look like do we have people in our world that enrich us and lift us up do we have people that that really do not judge us and, and don't bring us down? What does our learning look like? Our education, our personal development, our spiritual growth? What does our spiritual routine look like? What does that life look like? And sometimes also when you look at the bigger picture like that, it could take a lot of pressure off of trying to force and push those specific things to happen, like the financial freedom or the financial abundance or the business success or the next level in business or the 20K months or the 50K months. When we're so focused on these specifics, it could become very difficult to move into that reality. But when we instead step back and look at the personal transformation and the bigger picture, it becomes a lot easier. You start implementing these little steps, right? You start trying to figure out, well, who is the version of me who's living there? And what can I do right now to become that version of me? That's embodiment, embodying the energy. Steph said, I learned so much of moving through and sorting the old patterns is sitting with the big feelings. 
feeling them to process them exactly that is beautiful healing is such a huge part of everything i do for a reason and sometimes another way to master our energy is like what steph just said sit with the feelings that are coming up feel them in your body right we got to feel it to heal it healing is a huge part of everything i do but sometimes i think we could also get so hung up on healing we feel like we need to heal this before we can create that or we feel like oh i have blocks i have um i have money blocks or i have limiting money beliefs and i gotta fix all these things before i can create the success and abundance that i truly desire when instead it's it's not about that you're in control you are in total control you're in the driver's seat so what if instead you could do something like what Steph just said, isolate the feeling. Where's the feeling in your body? Isolate it, feel it. Okay, now I choose to release it with love. That's taking control of your energy. That's taking control of your reality. I don't know if you hear the, the chair squeaking, right? <laughs> this is my brand new pink chair, everybody. I didn't have it for our last challenge. It's really nice. It's good to be comfortable. So, you know, I, I finally finally started to see success for a few reasons. One is because I started looking at the bigger picture, the quantum transformation, the quantum growth. And another thing is I started to really track my wins each day instead of thinking about why everything wasn't working, how everything wasn't working, what I need to do to make it work. Da -da 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 -da. That's another infinity loop that you could get stuck in. So instead of freaking out about everything that was going wrong each day, I started to look at the things that were going right. I started to think about that one new email subscriber that I had, or I started to think about how good I felt to show up in my business each day and how good it felt to be in my purpose each day. And I say purpose like this, because I think we can have many purposes throughout our lifetime. I think our souls can have many purposes. That's why it's never too late to start over. That's why it's never too late to start again. That's why you're never behind. Okay. I not only have I seen massive growth over the last year, my clients, my students are transforming before my eyes, like wildly. And it's because they follow the same processes. They follow the same tools that I give them. One of my students has, she, her Instagram has exploded to over 20,000, like over 20,000 and she's filling her group programs. My other students, they're doing the deepest healing work of their lives. They're moving across the world. They are setting boundaries. They're coming back to their spiritual practice. They're doing all of these things. And, and that's literally what I did. It's like a formula. I mean, it's not really a formula because you've got to follow. You need to create your own formula. But basically, everything that I'm talking about over the next five days, these are things that I have done. Pick and choose what really speaks to you. Create your own formula. It's all about you. So all of a sudden, I'm seeing all of this crazy success. I'm, I'm trying to figure out how I got here. And it really it was that quantum transformation the whole entire journey and instead of constantly being in struggle mode I started to see my wins I was my biggest critic let me know if anyone can relate to that who is their biggest critic and saboteur and I was my biggest critic for a very 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 long time it still comes up sometimes I'm not perfect you know we're always learning we're always healing we're always growing I was my biggest critic, Stuff says, oh yes, yeah. And when I was in that energy of being my biggest critic, guess what? I just created more of that. It just perpetuated everything. And I was looking at everything, even though I loved manifestation and I love spirituality and I knew how the world worked and I knew how my mind worked and I knew how you know our thoughts and our feelings create things, I still couldn't get myself out of that negative cycle. And it, it, when I started to do the deep healing work, it helped immensely. It helped immensely because it's not about getting yourself out of the cycle. Sometimes we, we feel like, why are we being so, so negative? Why are we shaming ourselves? We can't do this. I can't get myself out of here. It's because we try to avoid it. We try to avoid the deeper feelings that we're really feeling. We're going to talk about healing on day three, by the way. We're going to, and you're going to do some healing work too. Mandy says, I definitely still fall into that trap sometimes. Yeah. I was my biggest critic and it just continuously played out. It wasn't until I started to look at that story, the story that I was my biggest critic, things started to break down. I began to figure out why I felt that way. What, what instances in my life that led me there? 
when did it first happen? You know, like for as long back as I could remember, I was my biggest critic. I was always blaming myself for everything. My mantra was, I can't do anything right. I can't do anything right. Checking in on Facebook. Erica says, I am. I'm absolutely mine. Kidda says me. Yup. Hmm. I know. It's difficult. But sometimes we try to avoid it. And when we avoid it, it, it's in that space of avoiding it that it's going to keep popping up. It's going to keep coming up. It's going to keep coming up. And it's going to play out in different areas of your life, too. But when we finally look at these things, not only does bringing awareness to it, like saying it out loud, hmm, I'm my biggest critic. Okay, well, why am I biggest? Why am I my biggest critic? How long have I felt like this? You know, kind of like speaking it out loud and working your way through it or journaling it out. That's bringing awareness to it. I don't know why it works so beautifully, but sometimes bringing awareness to things is all you need. It's crazy. But I was, I was my biggest critic. I was my biggest saboteur. And it was like, it, it just perpetuated the cycle. So what happened was after about, I want to say a year and a half of my business, I took off two whole years. So I really wasn't in business for five whole years, like straight. I took a good two years off for a deep healing journey to heal alcohol addiction that came up during COVID. Um, I talk about that a lot on my different platforms, but basically during COVID, I, well, this is actually a really good example. So alcohol addiction came up for me years and years and years and years and years after I thought I had already healed addiction addictive patterns from high school, from college. I thought it was gone. I thought I was done. And then all of a sudden during COVID, boom, I'm hit with alcohol addiction. I'm like, why is this coming up again? This is crazy. I thought I went, I have gotten over this. And it was coming up again because I had never faced those darkest parts of me that chose to use substances. I never faced those darkest parts of me that chose to use substances instead of being free and herself and loving herself. I, I never faced those old stories, so it continued to play out, and then it came up again in alcohol addiction. So what happened was I took two years off from my business. I went on a deep healing journey. I know not everyone could take two whole years off, of course, but the healing work is really al what allowed me to come back to my business full time last year and start to think about what the whole transformation was going to look like. I had to clear out a lot of old energy. I had to learn how to work with energy. We're gonna do get into that this week too, by the way. I had to learn that it all came back to me. It all comes back to you. That's why we're doing this work. It's all about you. And a lot of times when things aren't going the way we want them to in our lives, in our businesses, in our relationships, we need to go within and and look at ourselves and see where that pattern is coming up within ourselves so something that was happening to me when i first came back to my business full-time last year after the two-year-long healing journey i came back to my business full-time i came back to instagram and everything had changed instagram was a completely different app Social media was weird. Like it, it was like, I felt like nobody was seeing my content. I felt like I was creating content every day for the algorithm to hate it. I, I was getting so frustrated and I was creating content every day. Like I was on top of it and I enjoyed it. And I, I was just like, the algorithm hates me. This isn't working. Nobody sees me. Nobody sees me. I kept saying that nobody sees me. No one's listening to me. Nobody sees me. No one's listening to me. And I'm like, okay. Then I launched my signature program, Manifesting Miracle Worker Academy. I launched it last spring, twice, back to back. Failed both times. Complete failure. Not one person enrolled in that program. Actually, actually one person did enroll, but then they completely disappeared. So it was like, like no, like no energetic connection. Everything was going wrong. It sent me into a crazy dark night of the soul. I thought there was something so wrong with me. I thought I wasn't meant to do this work that I loved. I thought I wasn't meant to do any of this. I thought that I was a failure and, and, I, and I couldn't figure out why I couldn't get it to work. I was showing up every day. I had an email list. I had a lot of people who came to my free challenges. I have people who really enjoyed showing up to, to learn from me and work with me, but they, I, it was like I could not figure out that monetary component. I couldn't get people into my programs. And then also I felt like nobody was listening to me. I felt like no one was listening to me. I felt like no one was seeing me. So I had to go within. I finally you know, figured this out with some help from my mentor. I had to go within and ask myself, well, how am I not seeing myself? 
where am I not paying attention to myself? Because everything that is happening in our external reality is, is really a mirror for what's going on internally within us. Where are you not giving yourself the time and the attention and the space? How are you not showing up for yourself? How are you not listening to yourself? How are you not seeing yourself? It literally all comes back to you. Checking out on Facebook. Erica says, I'm becoming my biggest supporter, though. I love that. Beautiful, Erica. Erica is in my membership. She's one of my membership students, and she's a freaking rock star. They all are. Steph says, what you feel about others is what we need to go inwards on. And that could happen both ways, too, right? So sometimes we may feel a certain way about others, and we could be mirroring our own thoughts and feelings about ourselves. But it could also go the other way. People can completely just put on us how they feel about their own selves. And we have to be able to recognize that. So when we're our biggest critics and when we just like aren't listening to ourselves and we're like letting that inner critic just run away with it, that's really our ego coming up, guys. You probably know this, right? And it's really important to identify when the ego is getting really loud because the ego is basically the complete opposite of our higher self, all right? Our higher self, that's what we aim to be. We aim to be the highest version of ourselves in this lifetime, right? We aim for enlightenment. We aim to be closer with that source energy that's within us, the God energy, the energy of creation. We all have it within us. And when we do healing and when we do manifestation work and re reality creation and we, when we work to transform our lives, what we're really doing is trying to come back to that higher self energy within us, which is also rooted in deep self-love, right? Our higher selves, she's not, our, she's not criticizing herself. She's not shaming herself. She's not blaming herself. So that's the goal, right? To move closer and closer to that energy. But when the ego comes up and when the ego gets really, 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 really loud, it tunes that energy out. This is why it's really, really important to get to know your higher self as well and get to know that energy. We're going to be doing that on day four or five, like really getting to know your higher self. But when it comes to the ego, recognize it. Recognize it for what it is. Recognize when these thoughts come up. Sometimes you may also you're here, right? You signed up for this for this uh, five day challenge. You're here. You signed up because you want more abundance and success and fulfillment and spiritual connection in your life. And you, you want your dream life. Sometimes when we choose these things, shit will come up to the surface. Like shit will come up to the surface when we choose these things. We will start to get really, our egos will start to get really loud. We'll begin to criticize ourselves. We'll begin to tell ourselves we're not worthy worthy or worth it. We'll begin to tell ourselves we can't do it. We'll begin to tell ourselves, well, everyone else could do it, but I can't make it work. That must mean that I am not meant for it. And we keep talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. That's the ego coming up. That's the ego. So when we choose a bigger path, when we choose the path of our dreams, when we choose to get closer to that divine energy within us, the ego can get very, very loud. This is why you've got to be aware of that. Be aware of it. Recognize it for what it is. And the reason ego does that is in an effort to keep us safe, right? So when we choose our expansion and our growth, that means our lives are going to change. Change is scary. We don't know what's going to be on the other side. We have no idea. So in an effort to keep us safe, the ego will become really loud. We recognize it for what it is. Tell your ego, I do this all the time. It's okay. It's all right. That's okay. And the other side of that is really getting to know your higher self, which you're going to be doing through this challenge. That's another reason we do the work that we do. That is the reason. It's all in service of your higher self. It's all to become part of that energy more and more. And that energy is you. It's not external. Your higher self is you. It's the divine part of you. And the more you do this work, the closer you get with that energy. The more you heal, you shed the old layers, the closer you get with that energy. Get to know your higher self. Recognize your ego. Checking in. Okay, Facebook. Just want to check in. Hello, Instagram. Everyone joining in. Yeah. Shit's going to come up when you expand. It happens. A lot of people experience this. Let me know if you have ever 
ever experienced this or if you're experiencing this now, when you choose to create the reality of your dreams and you choose to expand and grow, things go wonky. Let me know if you've ever experienced that or you know, you feel really emotional, it feels like nothing is working, it feels like shit is hitting the fan, it can happen. That's like my dark night of the soul moment when I had those two failures after I launched my signature academy program. These things come up to teach us. These things come up to help us grow. So the version of me that I was when I launched the academy, I could not have held space for the people that I wanted in that program. It wasn't going to work. I was still operating from the old energetic frequency. I did not know how to hold space for others in a bigger way. I had no idea. While I was good at putting together the information and the program itself, I was good at recording, you know, masterclass trainings and putting together the workbooks and everything is perfect. I wouldn't change anything about that program. And I never did. The next launch was a success, by the way, guys. <laughs> Number three. I wouldn't change anything about that program, but what I did have to change was how I showed up, how I showed up for myself, how I was able to hold space for others. There was no way I would have been able to do that, especially when I was still in self-blame and self-shame and criticizing myself for every single thing. I was barely getting enough sleep. I wasn't do I wasn't on top of my practices, you know, like even my spiritual work, I, I did it, but I wasn't on top of it like I normally would have been. It, it was like that foundation was wobbly and we can't create from wobbly energy we can't hold space for others from wobbly energy we can't call in dream clients from wobbly energy it's just not gonna work my hair is wet that's why it's up like this right now i didn't know it sounded giant it's just not gonna work okay checking in on facebook All right. yes so and another you know like the reason a reason Okay, the reason why I wasn't able to see the success I wanted for so long is because I was showing up in that wobbly energy. And then the clients that I did attract, the clients that did come into my world, they weren't aligned clients. It was, it almost felt like difficult to work with some of them. Some of them just kind of disappeared. And it was like, I kept asking myself, well, what is wrong with me? There must be something wrong with me. This isn't working. That must mean it means something about me. But these things never mean anything about you. The fact that you're not where you want to be or not where you should be, it means nothing about you. All it means is that it is your chance to go deeper. Go deeper and ask yourself, how can you show up for yourself more? How can you expand into a higher energetic frequency? We do that through healing. We do that through deep self-love. We do that through building that foundation of deep self-love and be more connected with our higher self energy. And really think about it, like get honest with yourself. If you're not where you wanna be, think about it. Well, can I really hold that energy on a, on a higher level? Hmm, if not, well, what do I have to let go of? That's why in the email that I sent out yesterday, I one of the questions was, what are the old stories that are coming up? What do you need to let go of? And why are you in wobbly or how, or where are you in wobbly energy right now? Really like get clear about these things. And it's okay, don't shame yourself. This isn't to say that, you know, uh, you're never gonna get to this place until you clear out your energy, just like we were talking about before. Like, I need to heal this before I can create that, right? Like, that kind of mindset will get you stuck. This is just to be aware of where you're at. And if things aren't going the way that you want them to, bringing awareness to your energy is very important. Bringing awareness to your dominant beliefs and the dominant stories that you're telling yourself is very important. So usually when I teach reality creation, I teach it in three phases. Phase one is creating. That's when we paint the picture. That's when we set our intentions. That's when we decide what we want. Um, phase two is healing. So after we decide what we want, a lot of things are going to come up to the surface, right? All of those stories we have to clear out in order to expand into that new energetic frequency. That's where healing comes in. And then phase three of reality creation is embodiment. This is how I teach it. And embodiment means you are being the version of you who is living in that next level, amazing and abundant and successful reality. You got to get to know that version of you. Now, I teach it in three phases, but that doesn't mean that the phases have to go one, two, three, right? 
like you have to you have to set the intention first and then you have to heal and then you have to embody it doesn't always go like that sometimes you may choose to be in a space where you're doing your manifestation work like visualizing or scripting i'm going to give you a scripting practice for homework by the way so you might be in that space where you're doing your manifestation work and then something for healing comes up okay look at it bring awareness to the things that need to be healed that you need to send love to in order to heal right even though that that deep inner critic and being your biggest critic that isn't a part of you that you need to shame even more send that part of you away with love always with love so embodiment is probably the most important part of the whole entire process because when we are well okay healing is really important embodiment is how you're really going to get into that next level reality that's what we're talking about in the five-day series so when you're embodying the energy of the version of you that you desire to be you're going to boom pop into that reality but really to be a master of reality creation and all of these three phases you need to learn how to do the dance between all these three phases you need to really look at things when they come up so when i was going through that dark night of the soul after two failed launches I had a lot of stuff coming up for my healing and at first I was ignoring it because all I could do was tell myself I'm wrong, I'm bad, I'm not meant for this, I'm not cut out for this, I always do everything wrong, it was stupid of me to leave my 9 to 5, you know, what am I doing with my life, you know, like it just kept going and going and going and going and instead finally I had to break the cycle and be like wait a minute, these things are coming up for my healing. How could I have led a group of women? to their empowerment and to their most successful and abundant reality. If I was still telling myself that I do everything wrong, I couldn't. How would I have been able to do that if I was still just operating in that wobbly energetic frequency? It wasn't going to work. I had old stuff I had to clear out. Now, as I keep saying, <laughs> sometimes we do, oh, let me read, Erica said, Things definitely go wonky. There are times I think I'm on track and then bam, I have learned to move through it and not let it keep me stuck. Exactly. It's hard to control my reactions, but I am learning how and learning what triggers me and how to handle it all. It's a dance, guys. These things are a dance. See what comes up, right? Each and every day. Okay, well, I'm feeling like this. Don't don't uh, shame yourself for feeling like that. Well, why am I feeling like this? Okay, well, what is coming up for my healing? Okay, well, what, what kind of story can I dismantle here? What kind of story can I really look at and let go right now? Okay, it's transformation, personal transformation. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, right? The momentum gets bigger and bigger and bigger the more you do this work too. So it's all about checking in with yourself, learning your vibration, learning your energy, asking yourself these things every single day, every single day. Um, you know, it's really the overall dream life like I was saying and and also how you show up in one area is how you show up in every area so if you're not showing up for yourself it's gonna be really hard for you to show up for your business even if you think you're showing up even if you're showing up like like literally showing up every day and creating content every single day things might not be working the way you want them to if you're not really showing up for yourself first okay so it's the whole entire dream life. And when you, when we talk about embodiment, my notes got a little messed up, by the way. Usually I have notes, guys, but like most of the time I kind of go off book and I kind of just like come back to it. But right here it was like, I, I had like three things that were typed out that were exactly the same. So I was just like, whoa. So it's the whole process of quantum transformation. Also, when we think about the whole dream life, the dream life as a whole, we could start incorporating those bits and pieces into our here and now. That's embodiment. That's embodiment, right? So let's say we are really, really wanting that success and abundance and it's not working well. My most successful and abundant self, uh, what, what does her morning routine look like, right? Or, or what does she do each day? How does she show up for herself each day? What does her spiritual practice look like? What is her workout routine? Go do those things. Get your mind off of the stuff that you want really, really bad, Right? Because all the time, often, not, yeah, all the time, when we think too much about the things that we want and we're thinking about why they're not here or when I was lamenting after my two failed launches, oh, well, it must mean there's something wrong about me. You, you go and you spin out in those circles and it just keeps perpetuating. It just keeps going on and on and on and on. But when you can 
really stop bring awareness to what's going on bring awareness to your ego oh this is my ego my ego is coming up to keep me safe i'm gonna say you know what ego i'm okay we'll be okay i'm gonna continue moving through or when the stories come up that you have to dismantle just bringing awareness to it right this is just having control over your reality having control being the master of your own reality all right so today what i want you to do is really begin thinking about the overall dream life vision for the next 12 months okay we're talking about all of 2024 you're going to really look back on it and really think about what you want what do i want this year what do i want as a whole picture what do i want my life to look like what do i want each area of my life to look like what does the bank account look like? What does my wellness routine look like? What does my home look like? What does my family look like? What do my friends look like? What is that 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 circle of amazing soul sisters? What, what do they look like? What do my clients look like? What do I get to do each day? I really want you to think about this, okay? And for homework, what you're going to do is script out your life in a year from now. You are going to pretend that you are the version of yourself living in that dream reality one year out. And you're going to write about your dream reality as if you're already in it, right? Like this morning was so amazing and I got to sip coffee or tea on my beautiful porch and look at the trees in my gorgeous backyard and I love working from home and I have the most amazing clients and da 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 Have fun with it. Like really have fun with it. So scripting is one of the number one, is the number one practice that I teach uh, it's the number one practice I use. A big reason why I found so much success over the last year is because I doubled down on my scripting practice. Like I really doubled down on it. I did it pretty much every single day. I scripted almost every single day. Scripting about my desired reality as if it has already happened. But what I want you all to do is really look at that big picture. Because yes, we're creating success and abundance. Yes, that's what we're going to be focusing on for the next four days, five days, four days, for the next week. But I really want you to kind of zoom out and look at the bigger picture, too. Because when we talk about embodying the version of us who is already living there, we really need to get clear on what the big picture looks like. So for your homework tonight, you're going to write about that big picture. Think about one year out. Pretend you are the version of you living a year from now. Okay? Design your dream life and what it looks like over the next year. Your relationship with money. Your bank account. Your friends, I said that already. The things you do, the places you go, the vacations, the retreats, the, the classes that you attend, the sound baths, the Reiki, like everything. What does your room look like? What does your office look like? Who are you around every day? Like really get into it and write it in the present tense or the past tense, like you're in it already. Don't write it as like, well, I really hope this happens or in 2024, I'm going to do this. Don't write it like that. You want to write it as if it's already happening. That's what scripting is, as if you're already in it. Pretend that that you are that version of you already. Okay. Does anyone have any questions? Oh, there's some da, da, da. scripting will bring more than what I can envision. I'm not great at envisioning. I don't want to see myself short. Scripting it, it, scripting and visualizing are two completely different practices, but they could be very similar. Like for, for scripting, you're writing it down and you're getting a really good idea. Visualizing, you're closing your eyes and you're, you're, you're visualizing it. You're getting a really good idea. And it's not that one practice is more powerful than the other. It, it's just that for me, scripting has always been that boom, like, like, it's amazing what has happened for me for script because I've been scripting and because I've been doing it consistently. So, you know, also, there is no rigid way to do this, guys. Do it the way that feels best to you. Put pen to paper. See what comes out. Think, come, yeah, see what comes out. Think about your dream life in a year from now and put pen to paper and see what comes out. But do it from the space of future you. Pretend you are your future self who's already living in that aligned and abundant and successful and delicious reality one year out pretend that you are that version of you and you're sitting down and you're taking out your journal today and you're writing about your amazing delicious life michelle says love the clarity you are so welcome tina says i'm excited to see what happens amazing does anyone have any questions at all by the way i was very sick last week so that's why like my throat is still not great 
I hope everyone can hear me. I, I was trying not to cough. <laughs> Let me know if anyone has any questions. Tomorrow, 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 we're going to come together again at 1 o'clock. I want my little thing to load. Da, da, da. Tomorrow is all about dreams, desires, and divine connection. So we're going to go even deeper into these desires and dreams. You are going to learn more about that higher self energy and how to connect with that divine energy within you and how this really builds into your overall plan for success and abundance in 2024. It's going to be your most successful and abundant year yet. And decide, decide that now. Make that decision, okay? Because you are worth it. It's all about you. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Let me know if you have any questions. You can leave them in the Facebook group. And you can also leave them on Instagram. Yeah. And if anyone is joining in and you haven't actually registered for the challenge, just go to my link and you will get all the information, all the emails, etc. Thank you for being here. All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Have fun with your homework. Bye. Bye, Steph. You're so welcome. Me too, Erica. Bye, guys. <laughs>